God, we bless your name. We glorify you. We lift you, Father. God, we say hallelujah to your name, for you are worthy. There is no God like you. Father, we praise you again, Father God, for you are worthy of all the honor, all the praise, and all the glory. Now we ask you, Father, to forgive us for our sins. Bless us on tonight that we will hear from you by way of your word. Bless your word, Father God, that your word will be relevant. Bless your word, Father God, that your word will be secure. Bless your word, Father God, that your word will go forth in the name of Jesus, that your word will return unto you, Father God, with fruitfulness. Lord, bless us to hear from you tonight, Father, that we will honor you, glorify you, and lift your name. It's in the name of Jesus we pray and we ask it all. Amen and thank God. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. He saved. He saved my soul. Yes, God did it. You saved. You saved my soul. And for that, I just want to say, say thank you. Anybody in the room will God save your soul? Did he save your soul or you just saved yourself? Matter of fact, we're going to talk about that tonight. Who saved you? Who delivered you? Who developed you? Who saved your soul? We'll be looking at, at Psalm, 30, Psalm 62. Psalm 62. If you don't mind, let's look at Psalm 62 tonight. Psalm number 62, Psalm number 52 is in the Old Testament. It's a number of psalms, not a chapter of psalms. Uh, the book of Psalms in Psalm number 62. We call it a number because the book of Psalms are books of songs that, that they used to sing, hymns. And so it's not a chapter, it's a number. The book of Psalms, Psalm number 62. Amen? Psalm number 62. We'll see how far we get tonight. Our verses 1 through 12 is where our focus is. Written by David. David is writing. He got these words from the chief musician. And David was a man of war. So David had some enemies, right? Whenever you go to war, you're going to have some enemies. Matter of fact, if you don't go to war, you're going to have some enemies. Some people are going to be your enemies just because they can. Some people are going to be your enemies because of something you've said or done. Others just are enemies because they need somebody to hate. There are people that just need somebody to hate, somebody to dislike. I mean, they get joy out of hating people. They get joy out of hating people. Psalm number 62, and we will, we will look at verses 1 through 12, see how far we get before the end of the night. Truly my soul silently waits for God. For him, from him comes salvation, my salvation. He only is my rock and my salvation. He is my defense. I shall not be greatly moved. Psalm number 62. Psalm number 62. Verses 1 and 2 says that truly my soul silently, silently waits for God. My soul silently waits for God. My soul silently waits for God. David says, David says, in the midst of my troubles, in the midst of the struggles with my enemies, my soul, the word soul means my very own self. 
my soul will not only will I, my soul wait for God, no, not only will my very own self wait for God, I'm going to wait silently. It says, my very inner being, my very own self. He says, truly my soul silently waits for God. He's waiting for God because there's nobody. And then he, he goes on to say that there's nobody else like our God. So my soul waits for God. What are you waiting for? What are you waiting and how long have you been waiting? And then what's your posture as you wait? David says, my posture is to be silent in my waiting. To be still in my waiting. The psalmist says, be still and wait on the Lord. So here the psalmist in Psalm 62 says it like this. Truly my soul silently waits for God. I'm going to wait on God and my posture is going to be one of stillness. One of quietness. I'm going to wait on the God that I serve in stillness. In other words, I'm not going to panic. We panic, don't we? We panic. If God doesn't hurry up and come, we really panic. It used to be at the age of 30, if women hadn't gotten married at the age of 30, they, they begin to panic. Now it's at the age of 15. If <laughs> the age is 15, 18, if they hadn't, hadn't, hadn't lassoed somebody by the age of 15 or 18, they panic. The psalmist says, in my troubles, in my hard times, in my struggles, remember he's a, he's a person that's a military person, David is. And he says, in my struggles, I am going to settle myself down and I'm going to wait silently for the Lord. Truly my soul, my very own self, I am silently waiting for God. This word God is the, the word in the Old Testament in Hebrew is Elohim. Elohim. It is the exceeding God and this exceeding God is being compared to all other gods. David says, Regardless of the gods that surround me, I'm going to wait on this almighty exceeding God. I am waiting on the supreme one. I'm going to wait on God. People create their own gods. But David says, I'm going to wait on God. God almighty. You know, when he says, I'm going to wait on God, he says, I'm going to wait silently. I'm going to be in stillness. I'm going to be quietly waiting. And for a lot of people, that's hard to do. First of all, God made promises. And we believe for a while that God will always deliver. God will always keep his promises. But if God waits too long, we can't wait in stillness. We can't wait in silence. We cannot wait in quietness. We get angry with God. There are people right today that's angry with God because God hadn't come through yet. They're upset with God. But David says, out of all I've been through, I'm going to wait in stillness. I'm going to wait in quietness. I, myself, we're going to wait on the Almighty God, the Supreme One. So the psalmist compares these man-made gods with the Almighty God. And other people are depending on these man-made gods. David saying, I'm going to wait on the supreme God in the midst of this. From him comes my salvation. Remember now, this word salvation is not delivering of one's soul. It's not delivering of one's unto sanctification. It is not the spiritual salvation. This is the salvation that means that I need deliverance right now. I'm going to fix right now.
That's what David's saying. I'm going to fix. I've already declared. I'm going to wait in silence for the, for the God I serve. And he says, from him, I know one thing. One thing I know, from him comes my salvation. The word salvation is deliverance. The word salvation is victory. The word salvation is help. The word salvation is health. So David says, if I'm going to be healthy, if I'm going to be deliberate, if I'm going to have victory, if I'm going to get help from anybody, it's going to be from the God we, I'm waiting on. He is waiting on God. We sometimes get as the Israelites when Moses was up, and I know you've been doing your Bible listening, and you passed that point where when Moses went up on the mountain to talk to God, and while he was up on the mountain, the folk told Aaron, look, Aaron, he's up there so long. He said, they said, matter of fact, he's up there too long. Matter of fact, we don't know what that joke of Moses is doing. That new, new Living Translation says it like this. We don't know what that guy Moses is doing up there on that mountain. But we know he said he was going up there to talk to God. He said he was going over there to be with God. But he's been up there too long. So I tell you what, Aaron, you make us a God. Aaron tells them, take off all their jewelry. Their, their, now, I, I've always tried to, tried to figure it out. What are they doing with jewelry in the wilderness? But at the fact of the matter, as I did my Bible studying and my Bible reading, they, they began to pull out all the stuff from the Egyptians. And because they left. There were some of the Egyptians that favored them and gave them stuff. But if you can't spend money in the wilderness, if you can't get money for jewelry, I mean, what's the purpose of it? I see some people, in, in, especially preachers, I mean, they got a ring on every finger. I got to watch in my office right now that somebody left here. That thing is so heavy. It ain't real, but it's heavy. But we're like, it's not yours. It was left over there on the drum. That's not yours, is it? I mean, it is heavy. I mean, it, it looked like a, a miner's watch. And some people just got to have jewelry. They have it on thumbs, pinky fingers, pointing fingers. Every finger they got, they got to have jewelry. You, you remember the, the news flash of the preacher was preaching in the pulpit. They came in to rob the place. And I told y'all that the drama was in, in with it. Y'all remember that? Well, they came in to rob him, and he gave up his ring and his watch. And they said, no, give me what's under your clothes. It's a setup. And when you look at the drama that was sitting right, in, right next to the preacher, he was just sitting there so calmly. I can just make it known right now. If somebody come in here to rob me, you got $100 on this finger and, and maybe 45 on this one. Or maybe 100 on this and 45 on this one. And the value has gone down after 25 years anyway. So, so they gave their gold to Aaron. And Aaron created them a God. And the God that he created didn't even look like a man. But they worshiped him. David says, I am not going to wait on some man-made God. I'm going to wait on the supreme, exceeding God the God that will do anything but fail because from him will come and from him comes my deliverance, my salvation, my victory, my health, and my help. If you wonder where your help, your help comes from, it comes from God. If you wonder where your health comes from, it comes from God. I used to watch Tony Atlas. I used to watch Arnold Schwarzenegger. I used to watch Tommy and Earl Campbell and all these guys. And guess what? Right now they're suffering. So our health does not come from what we do. Our health doesn't come from how strong we are. Our health comes from the Almighty God. He says, David says, this God that I'm talking about is my salvation. It's my deliverance. Then he says in verse number two, 
He only is my rock and my salvation. He alone. There's no one like him. He alone is my rock. This, first, this phrase, my rock, means that he believes that God is his boulder. Big old rock that no one can get around. The senior saint says it like this. God is so large you can't go through him. God is so high you can't go over him. God is so low you can't go under him. God is so wide you can't go around him. So David says that he's my boulder. He's my stone. He is my rock. He is my strength and my might. If you're going to depend on anybody, depend on this rock, this rock, God, this salvation, this one who makes us healthy. Word salvation here, again, simply means that he preserves us. It means that he's our, our prosperity. He is my salvation. Not only is he my health, not only is he my help, he's also my wealth. When you make a lot of money, when you have a lot of money saved, it's not because you're so smart. It's not because of your degree. It's because God has given you that salvation. He has given you that wealth. And he has blessed you. Who wouldn't serve a God like that? He, he blesses us. He keeps us. He's our prosperity. He's God. David says, I'm going to look to this God because he's my rock. My might, my strength, my boulder. He, he's my salvation. He's my prosperity, my wealth. He's my help. He's, he's my help. He is my victory. He's my deliverer. David says he's my defense. David says God is, is my defense. He's, he's the one who defends me. The word defense means that he's my high tower means that he's my security and my stronghold. God is my defense. He's my security. ADG can't do it. We see that's broken every day. And the more we get wireless connections, the more they hack him. Brinks won't help me. But the God I serve is my defense. He's my high tower. Meaning that God is able to take us above the dangers. My stronghold. He sticks with me when things get rough. And when security, when security systems go bad on us, they keep the payments rolling, but they don't come out in time. Well, we'll get there about four hours from next week. And then when they give you a time to get there, it's a four-hour gap. You gotta miss a whole day of work, and then sometimes they still don't make it. Well, we got caught up on another job. What if you had a God like that? If you had a God who, who would give you a time which is a span of time, would you want to serve that God? If you had a God that, well, we were on our way, but we got caught in traffic. We got stuck on another job. David says, God is my defense. He's my high tower. He's my stronghold. He is my security. As we go into a brand new year, we need to know who to call on. God, our high tower, he's my stronghold. He is my security. I shall not be greatly moved. Songwriter said, I shall not be moved. This phrase, greatly moved, means that I will not fall. It means that I won't fall into decay. I won't be greatly moved. I want the God, the God I serve won't allow me to slip. I won't be shaken. I will, I will not be decaying because of this. I will not be shaken. 
Sometimes we're so shaken by every little thing, we can't wait inside. Don't, don't be so rattled by stuff. Men ain't gonna do what they're gonna do anyway. Don't be so rattled by it. Matter of fact, don't be surprised by what people do. God said, well, you know this happened, right? Yeah, okay, it happened. Yeah, yeah, it happened. Are you surprised? No. God told me today, he said, man, you know this guy went through this problem and this problem? I said, okay. In other words, there was no way around it. Where for every action, there's an equal but opposite reaction. And sometimes the reaction is greater than the action. The lady looks on her camera, somebody breaks in her house, she leaves work, she goes home, the guy's coming from around her house, and, and she, uh, she looks at him and says, leave. He launches at her and he le she leaves him laying there. For every action, there's an equal and sometimes more than equal reaction. And when they interviewed his, interviewed his cousin, his cousin, female, says, she didn't have to kill him. Where are he going to get his money from? Where else he going to get his money? She says it on TV. Where he gonna get? Where he? What she think he gonna get his money? She didn't have to kill him. We live in a messed up world. Really, really. We live in a jacked up world. We live in a. I mean, people have come to the conclusion that right is wrong and wrong is right. And you ought to let me get away with what's wrong. And I'm entitled to get away with what's wrong. His cousin, it hadn't called my head in the last three weeks. She, she said, well, where are you going to get his money? You see, news reporters like putting cameras in, in the middle of faces of people with their night clothes on. Terrible with their speech. And with thuggish behavior and thuggish thoughts. Her question was, what, what she, why'd she kill him? She didn't have to kill him. Where are you going to get his money? She ought to know that he had to break in her house. The God we serve as we walk with him and we stay with him. The Bible said we won't fall into decay. We won't be greatly moved. We won't slip. We won't be shaken. We, we, won't, we won't come to the point where we are dislodged. Because of the God we serve. Isn't that awesome? We serve the amazing, the awesome God. Some people say he is an awesome God. No, he is the awesome God. Elohim means there's no God like him. When you compare this God to other gods, and this is what David does throughout the psalm, the psalm, psalm 62, he, he keeps comparing our God to other gods, and there is no comparison. He won't let me be dislodged. He won't let me slip. He won't let me be shaken. Don't get so rattled about stuff. It's going to work its way out. It's going to work out. If you walk with God, God can keep you. In verses 3 through 4, it describes the enemies. How long will you attack a man? And look how it describes the enemies. You shall be slain. All of you. So when he's slain, don't be surprised. <laughs> when things don't go well for them, don't be surprised. David says, keep touching the anointing. Your days will become shorter and shorter. You shall be slain. And he says, not just a few of you all, but all of you. You will come to a point where you're like a leaning wall in a tottering fence. I'm familiar with tottering fence. How about y'all? It's a fence where they got they got a fence up and then they got a two by four standing up behind it. Then they got another piece of fence and then they got a two by four standing up behind it. And then they got another piece of fence, got another two by four. But if, if they move the two by fours, the fence will fall down. If God takes his hands off of us, we will fall down. 
The psalmist says that the enemy will become as a tottering fence. In other words, that, that fence, that enemy will fall down. He, he's going to come down. It's going to happen. It, it doesn't matter how, how they, they justify what they do. It's going to come tumbling down. They only consult to cast him down from the high position. They only consult to cast individuals down. And even they consult to cast God down. You know how the devil did it, right? The devil conspired, the, the devil consulted to cast God down. In other words, he wanted to be God. And he leads other people to be God. And he tells other people, uh, some, some, I don't know if I can call them theologians, but some philosophers believe that we can be God ourselves. And as we improve our lives, we become God. Let me tell you, there is no point in our lives where we can become God, but we can depend on God. And as we depend on God, God makes us a different being. He supports us. They only consult to cast down or cast him down from his high position. They delight in lies. Preacher says, a lie will run a mile before the truth put his shoes on. What does that mean? A lie will run a mile before the truth put his shoes on. Somebody tell me what that means. A lie will run a mile before the truth put his shoes on. Who's going to tell me? I think that uh, when we lie, we have to keep on lying. Okay. And before you can, uh, uh, it gets to the last person, you know, that just keeps on. By then, their shoes are on, and they not necessarily see the truth, but they see that it was a lie. Okay, anybody else can help me out with this? A lie will run a mile before the truth put his shoes on. So it's brown. It moves quickly. A lie gets, get, I mean, a lie moves in a hurry. And people love the biggest, juicy lie you can tell. Oh, girl, I, I want to be the first one to tell this one. And they, they rush to tell it. They love to tell it. They want it to happen. It says they, they, they spend time conspiring in lies. They just love, they're just so caught up with it. If you, sit, if you see five people sitting around discussing calculus and algebra, and you look at the other table, you see 25 lying. If you see five people standing and talking about godliness, and truth. You got 35, 40 of them standing around lying. The text declares that they conspire. They consult. They drum up lies. Matter of fact, it says they consult to cast him down and they want him to fall from his high place and they delight in lies. They're excited about it. They actually love it. They live for it. I used to watch guys sitting around a barrel. I know that y'all don't do that here, do you? Guys sit around a barrel while everybody else is working. Even in a cold weather like this, they sit around a barrel. They, they put wood in the barrel, and they just sit there so you can tell the biggest lie. Yeah. Drinking, swallowing, and lying. Sharing a ball and swapping lies. Coming up with stuff that you can't even make up. Man, where you get that? Oh, man, I got one bigger than that. They consult. They, they inspire each other by lying. They love it. They delight in it. They get joy out of it. The psalmist says in Psalm number one that we delight in the law of the Lord. And in his law, we meditate on him day and night. 
and we will be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth our fruit in our season. But he says the ungodly is not so. They attack the righteous. They talk about the righteous. They scoff at the righteous. Psalm 62, he says, they delight in lies. Then he says, the end of verse number four, they bless with their mouths, but they curse inwardly. They'll say one thing, but they really feel a different thing. You know anything about that? How men will say one thing when they really mean another thing. They will say they love you, but they really hate you. Song that was out when I came up say, smile in your face. Y'all don't remember that one, do you? Y'all were holy during that time. All the time they want to take your place. Backstabbers. They will smile in your face. All the time they want to take your place. And their title, their, their names, their descriptions are backstabbers. That's what the text, the text, I think they got that from this verse. It says they bless with their mouth. But they curse inwardly. Who sung that song, y'all? OJ's. OJ's, okay. I got I to gotta touch base with them and see if this is where they got that. Because you know they sung spiritual and, and R&B, right? Smile in your face all the time they want to take your place, backstabbers. They bless with their mouths, but they curse inwardly. They really hate you, but they say they love you. Have anybody been victim of that other than me? Oh, Pastor, I just love you, Pastor. Oh, Matt, man, I'm here for you. And I'm already saying, oh, really? Really? Oh, man, oh, man, no, that's a lie. You don't even have to confess. You don't have to deal with that lie. Don't even tell me that one. Because the wicked are always drumming up wickedness. They're always looking for a way. And, the, and the, you know, the, the bad thing about it is they always get somebody else involved. Let me tell you, don't let a person bring you a bone. Because if they bring a bone, they will bring a, they will, if they bring a bone, they will carry a bone. Matter of fact, if they come to you with anything, especially about me, so just let them know, hey, let's get together, let's go talk to them about it. They won't come to you with very much more. But it says they get together, they conspire, they consult, they plot, and then they will say one thing with their mouths. How big of a coward can they be? How big of a hypocrite can they be? They will actually say something with their mouths and inwardly they really know that they really feel that the opposite. When I grew up there, uh, you could go and buy a whole car with a handshake. <laughs> and you don't have to worry about getting paid for it. You could walk in, my granddaddy would walk in the dealership, and they would say, hey, Nathaniel, come on in. He would come in, and he would walk out within 20 minutes by a handshake and leave with a whole car. Oh, Nathaniel, we'll, we'll, we'll sign the paperwork tomorrow. We'll sign it next. Well, I can't come back until the weekend. Okay, go ahead and keep it the whole week and we'll sign the paper then. With a handshake. Now they got papers this thick and then another one this thick for you to sign and people still won't pay. That was, that was once a time, I, and, and I know I, I know you were, you were back there then. You could actually give a person your word and they believed you. And you would make good of it. Matter of fact, old men during those days would say, you are no better than your word. That means if your integrity is not intact, if your word is not intact, you're not good. They would actually say, I'm going to pay you tomorrow. And they will have, when you get off work tomorrow, they'll be standing at your doorstep. 
Now you look for folk. They, folk will miss church to keep from paying you. Church folk. Folk will, will change their phone number to keep from paying you. They will say something with their mouths. And know they lying in with it all the time. First number, number, number five. My soul wait silently for God alone. The psalmist repeats throughout this psalm, Psalm 62, he repeats himself. He says, I'm waiting silently. He's reminding himself, sometimes you got to talk to yourself. Sometimes you have to remind yourself. Anybody here don't talk to themselves? Anybody present that, that do not talk to themselves? Anybody that, 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 anyone that does not talk to themselves, anybody. When you look at Psalms 103 and Psalms 107, the psalmist is talking to himself. He says stuff like, O soul, bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. And then as if the psalmist didn't hear himself, he said, come on, soul, bless the Lord. And this word soul again in that particular uh, pericope also means my very own self. So he's talking to himself, saying, come on, soul, bless the Lord. And then he says, now, soul, don't forget all the benefits that the Lord has given you. Don't forget the Lord's benefits. Then he says stuff like, he healed me. He blessed me. He restored me. He says, don't forget the benefits that God has given you. Bless the Lord, oh my soul. Let me tell you, you need to talk to yourself. Because if you don't talk to yourself, then yourself will get out of place. <laughs> If you don't tell yourself, now come on self, calm down now. Come on self, don't go there. So the question becomes, do you want Matthew or do you want Matt? What am I talking about, Sister, sister Whitlock? Do you want Matthew or do you want Matt? What am I talking about? Do you want cut Trina or do you want Trina? Do you want Kevin or do you want Cal? Do you want Lillian or do you want Lid? I think sometimes I get Lid. She'll get it when she gets to the house. Don't tell her now. Do you want Cora or do you want Cora? Do you want Carolyn or you want Cal? But Brother Miles, I get Cal a lot of times. <laughs> Since my soul wait, and, and you know what? I have to do like the psalmist. When I get cow, I have to say, Bless the Lord, oh my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. And I have to do it in silence. <laughs> and if you you're around most people in your life, you're gonna have to get to a point where you learn how to deal with things in silence. Don't be the one that has to have the last word. Sometimes you have to walk away and say, bless the Lord. A lot of people don't have jobs now because they couldn't walk away. Because they had to have the last word. And even as they walk away, they were <laughs> They had to have the last word. And they told them, Keep walking and don't come back. They forgot they had 10 children at the house. Uh, that's dependent on them. My soul waits silently for the Lord. And then he says alone. In other words, he's waiting for the Lord and he's waiting on the Lord alone. He's not waiting on the Lord and God call. He's not waiting on the Lord and somebody else. He has put all of his confidence in this supreme God himself. He put his confidence in God. All of his confidence is on display. He's waiting on the Lord. And the Lord alone. Well, if the Lord doesn't show up in the morning, I'm going to have to do something else. The psalmist says, I don't do it like that. The psalmist says, I am determined to stay with the Lord. And I'm going to wait on the Lord and nobody else. 
no thing else. I'm going to wait on the Lord. Am I going to make it happen on my own? No, I'm waiting on the Lord. Is there something that I need to do? Yeah, that's something you need to do. Stay with the Lord. He says, I'm going to wait silently. And I'm not going to make a big to-do of it. I'm not, gonna, I'm not going to, to be all loud and rouches with it. I'm praying. To, you know, some folk can get so holy and dogmatic with the word until they run everybody off. We just sitting at the table having a general conversation, and you go on and on and off and trying to prove yourself to be spiritual. Just wait patiently, silently for the Lord. The word wait means to be patient about it. Be still. Wait on God. And when you wait on him, he can bless you. The psalmist declares in verse number five that I'm going to wait on the Lord. I'm going to wait on him alone. Then he says, for my expectation is from him. The word expectation means my hope for what I'm longing is in him. My expectation for whatever I'm longing. For whatever I'm hoping, it's in the Lord. And I'm going to hope in the Lord. Lord, you got my total confidence. My expectation, my hope is in the Lord. My hope will come from the Lord. I'm expecting something from God and from God alone. After all, man can't deliver. You ever had, had to have something that man couldn't deliver? The Bible says, even when people's minds are not focused on what you, your mind is focused on, the Bible says, it is the Lord that takes the heart of the king and turn it to and fro like many rivers. The Lord turns the mind like many rivers to and fro. The, the heart of the king, the, this word heart, this word mind, these words mean the innermost being of the king. The heart of the king is in the hand of the Lord, and like many rivers, God turns the heart. In your daily listening, you ran through Exodus, and every time that Pharaoh's mind was changed, it's because the Lord changed it. And check this out. When Pharaoh decided to change his mind, the Lord said, I'm going to harden his heart. When Pharaoh decided to let the people go, God hardened his heart where he wouldn't let them go. The hand, the heart, the mind of the king is in the hand of the Lord. And like many rivers, God is just in control. God's in control. We might as well not fall out and kick like a dying rope. God is in control. And when God is in control, we ought to have the expectation and know that our hope comes from the Lord. Verse number six says, he only is my rock. He only is my salvation. He is my defense. He alone. He alone. God alone. This word rock means my might. This word rock is the boulder. This word rock is my strength. He is my rock. If I'm going to have any strength, if I'm going to have any, any might, it's going to come from the Lord. It's going to come from the Lord. Then he says again, it's my salvation. He's my salvation. He's my deliverance. He's my victory. He's my help. He's my help. It comes from the Lord. He is my defense. He is my defense. He's my high tower. He's my security. He's my stronghold. Every now and then you need to stop for a moment just to brag on who God is. Right. Have you noticed the psalmist had not gone into a, a great uh, uh, erogatory question of God? What you going to do for me? He's just telling God who God is. That's why I say to the choir, sing praises unto the Lord. Tell God who God is. Thank God that he is our defense. 
Thank God that he's our strong tower. He's our high tower. He's our stronghold. Tell God who God is. And watch what God does. God, you're the one that makes things right. God, you're the one that heals us. God, you're the one that gives us help. Remind God, as if he needs to be reminded, remind God of who God is. Without asking him for anything, or without telling him anything, ask God who God is. Ask God who God is. And as you ask God who God is, you tell God who God is, and when you tell God who God is, then God is able to bless us. Amen. Tell God who God is. And when you tell God who God is, don't forget to tell God. I guess I should make that. <laughs> when you tell God who God is, then you thank God for who God is. And when you thank God for who God is, when you thank God for who God is, then God blesses who we are. We, God is able to bless us. God is able to keep us. Make sure you tell God who God is. He says, God, I, I'm waiting on him. He is my rock. He is my salvation. He is my defense. He's my stronghold. He bears me up. He fights for me. He's the one who defends me. He's my defense. Then he says again, I shall not be moved. I shall not slip. I shall not be shaken. I shall not be dislodged. And the only reason I can't be shaken, only reason I can't be dislodged, only reason I cannot slip is because of who God is. It's not who we are, it's who God is. All of the maintenance issues we have in our building, if I could do something about it, we wouldn't have those same maintenance issues six months later. But the only person that can stop it, and this is my prayer, God secure us. Don't let the kinker worms. Don't, don't let the locusts eat up what you have blessed us with. God, you promised that you will restore. God bless our people, bless their health, bless their strength, bless their focus, bless their spiritual growth. Lord, bless the people that come in and out of the door. Lord, bless the visitors. Bless the people who hear from you. Lord, don't let any word come from the pulpit other than what's written in your word and make sure that it's transmitted to the people the way you want it to be transmitted through your word. I've heard so many people say to me, oh, that preacher that was here Sunday, he preached. That's what we want to hear. I want to bring someone that is the best to our church. We want the word of God to flow from the pulpit. After all, it is the pulpit, right? And so, don't you want your pastor here sometimes? Because sometimes your pastor's in the pit. And let me tell you, if you don't know that, I've got to be pulled out the pit. That's why, that's why we took the Bible and planted it right here under the pulpit that the word of God is symbolic. If, if, if you don't read it, it won't help you. Some people, when the weather gets bad, they take their Bible and they hold it close to their body. I say to them, when the weather gets bad, open it up and read it. So it's symbolic. Lord, bless every word that comes from this pulpit to be your word, that people will understand your word, that they will see your word, that they will obey your word. That's why we preach. That's why we teach. That's why we live lives, so people can understand who God is. We don't teach and preach, and I hope we don't. We don't preach and teach because we want people to see who we are. We want people to see who God is. We live our lives the way we live our lives so people can see God. 
In our prayers, God, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight that men, women, boys, and girls will glorify you. Because, God, you're my defense. Because, God, you're my shelter. Because, God, you're my refuge. Because, God, you love me. And when my enemies get, begin to consult against me, when my enemies begin to conspire against me, when my enemies begin to plot against me, you are still God and you hold me. You secure me. You bless me. In the midst of all that's going on around me. Because you are God. But Sean says in his song. No one's greater. Nobody's greater. He says. I look to and fro. I look to the highest mountain. There's no one greater. I went down to the valley low. There's no one greater. I went down to the deep blue sea. And there is no one greater, no one greater than you. Elohim. When he's compared to all other gods, he stands ahead of them because he's God. And he has made a way for us to see who he is because when we see his son, we see who God is. His son is the visible image of the invisible God and we see him through his son, Jesus the Christ, who died on Calvary and rose from the dead. And he is our salvation. He defends us. He keeps us. He, he is the one who secures us. And now we have, because we have Jesus, it's not just salvation of deliverance. It's salvation of not just deliverance from the wartime. It's salvation that's delivering us from our own selves and our sin. When Jesus died on Calvary and he rose from the dead, he gave us hope. He gave us health. He gave us strength. And there may be somebody present today who needs this hope, who needs this help, and who need this strength. You need Jesus. <laughs> Jesus the Christ. If you never received Jesus as your personal Savior, this is your moment. Try him. Invite him into your life. He's your hope. He's your high tower. He's your stronghold. Jesus died just for you and me. You got to trust him today. If you never received him, just bow your head with me and repeat out to me and invite him into your life. Say, Lord Jesus, I believe that you are the Son of God. I believe that you died for my sins. I believe that you rose from the dead. Now come into my life and make me a new person. Thank you for saving my soul. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and thank God. We believe now that you are born again, that you need to make sure you get in the word and stay in the word. That God will bless you and be your defense. He will be your refuge. Even in times like these. If you're looking for a church home, I recommend the New Beginning Church where Jesus is the captain of the ship. Where he is the one who we focus on. Where he is the main attraction. Where he is the center of attention. I recommend the New Beginning Church. If you want to join us, Inbox us and let us know you want to be a part of the New Beginning Church. If you've received Christ tonight during this broadcast, let us know that you have received Jesus Christ. We'll be glad to fellowship with you and celebrate with you. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for being a part of our service here at the New Beginning Church, 4251 Sheremont Road, Houston, Texas, 
7-7-0-4-8. That is 4251 Sherman Road, Houston, Texas, 77048. Come and visit with us. Be a part of our Wednesday night Bible study at 7.15 p.m. And you can also be a part of our Sunday school at 9 o'clock a.m. And a part of our worship service on Sunday morning right after our Sunday school at 10.30 a.m. We'll be glad to have you join us. Thank you for so much for joining us. It is now offering time. It is time to give to the Lord through tithes, offering, and sacrificial gifts. It's time to give to the Lord. For those of you who want to give electronically, you can do so by giving by way of Zelle. Our Zelle account is lifting.jesus at yahoo.com. Lifting.jesus at yahoo.com. Our Zelle account is lifting.jesus at yahoo.com. Or you can mail in your gift to P.O. Box 503, Missouri City, Texas, 77459. P.O. Box 503, Missouri City, Texas, 77459. For those of you in the room, if you have an offering, you can bring it now. Father God, we thank you for the opportunity to give. We thank you for blessing us in our gifts. We ask you to bless every giver. In Jesus' name, amen. Jesus. 
Jesus said, And I, if I be lifted up from the earth, will draw all men unto me. John 12 and 32. You are dismissed. Thank you so much.